A few months ago, I officially became a licensed EMT, which stands for Emergency Medical Technician. And to celebrate passing all of those tests, I went ahead and bought this huge medical bag right here. And today I'm going to show you what all I have in it so far. This is a Lightning X Products EMT bag. In this first smaller pouch right here, I have everything for BSI, which stands for Body Substance Isolation. Basically, everything to help me stay safe. So, I have an N95 mask, which we all know plenty about these by now. And I have some gloves, which I almost will always wear. Um, these are just some more gloves in case I run out. Right here I have some goggles, so if there's body fluids that are going all over the place and I don't want them getting in my eyes, this would definitely be a smart thing to wear. Um, I have a personal cleaning washcloth. This is more of a thing I can use afterwards just to help, help me kind of clean up. And then I have a couple small trash bags which I can put all this stuff in afterwards to make sure it gets properly thrown out. In this smaller compartment on the other side I have everything to help me obtain a baseline set of vitals which I'll go ahead and show you what that is. I have a pulse oximetry reading. You can put this in someone's finger and it'll get their oxygen level or their SpO2 as well as their pulse which is kind of nice. Looking at it further we have a blood pressure cuff. Help me get a blood pressure. We've all seen those. Have a sphygmometer to listen to someone's heart, their lung sounds, and then also this will help me get someone's blood pressure. And then I have just this little light in which you can use to look at someone's pupils just to see how reactive they are. And this is another good instrument in understanding someone's vitals and what condition they're in. In this first big pouch right here, I have everything trauma. And you'll see this is probably the most things I have in one pouch, um, just because there's a lot when it comes to trauma. Um, but as you can see, just kind of going through everything, I have antibiotic ointment. This is useful for a lot of things, and I actually end up using a lot of this stuff on mosquito bites, because it actually helps heal those a lot, and it reduces itching, I've found. Um, tweezers, we have some of these special types of, uh, they're called Kelly Forcep straight scissors and well they're not really scissors but they're kind of like um like tweezers but what you can do is you can like if there were a splinter you could grab onto it click it and then it automatically keeps this close and that way you could just kind of pull it out um yeah that you got trauma shears if there's a major trauma incident you're going to want to cut everything off the person's body just so you can see what all is going on um, if there's like any hidden bleeding anywhere um, got some more shears right here. These are great for like cutting out bandages and things. But uh, yeah, I got three different options for that. Um, going on right here, we just have some rolled up gauze. As you can see, they're large to small. Um, right here, we have four by four gauze pads. These are used all the time, so I have a lot of them. Uh, I have two tourniquets right here. One's by Northern American Rescue, and then the other's by um, Rats and. Both are useful in different situations, and uh, talking about a tourniquet is a whole different video, which I actually have made before, so definitely go check that out if you want to learn more about tourniquets and what they are. Um, going down, I have even bigger gauze pads, um, and they just get bigger, and then this is the biggest one I have, as you can see, multi-trauma dressing, and if I ever have to use this, it's a bad day. <laughs> so this is a huge, huge gauze pad. Um, medical tape, useful for a lot of different things, and everything as little as band-aids. As you can see, this is just a big box of band-aids, and in this box I actually have something special. Um, as you can see, all different sizes of band-aids from large to small, and then I have this, which is like a band-aid spray. You can spray this on a cut and it just kind of, the spray acts like a band-aid. Personally, I'd rather have a band-aid, but some people prefer the spray, so there you go. Um, we'll go ahead and close that up. Inside this zipper here, I just have other things. Um, triangular bandages, a SAM splint for your finger to help stabilize it. Um, I was actually in the wilderness the other day and someone um, banged up their finger pretty good and I didn't have one of these, so I actually kind of used some wilderness EMT um, skills and made one of these out of sticks to help splint the finger. Um, I have a larger SAM splint, and this is just for larger extremities like your arm, 
just help to keep things stable if bones are broken. Um, this right here is a chest seal, a burn spray, and I have like burn pads right here and everything. Um, these are only great for smaller burns. There's a point where if the burn is just large enough, you don't really want to do too much to it just because it's not healthy. Um, moving on, just some more extra stuff. I have iodine pads. I believe I have some alcohol prep pads in here too. Um, just good for disinfecting. I have some more of these rollers just to kind of help, you know, keep gauze on the body. Um, just some antiseptic spray, you know, keep everything clean. And this compartment here, I just have kind of just drugs and general other things that are kind of miscellaneous, you could say. Um, going up right here, cough drops, um, anti-itch. Use these a lot for mosquito bites when I'm around them. Um, right here, I just have like a bunch of drugs like aspirin and um, just a bunch that you like sinus decongestant, like just a bunch of stuff that's just nice to have. Even if it's small like a headache, it's still just nice to have something. Right here I have some oral glucose, and the only thing I don't have in my vitals kit is a glucometer to help me find out what the blood sugar is. But um, having some oral glucose can be absolutely life-saving in a diabetic emergency because your brain needs glucose to survive, and if it goes without it for a certain amount of time, you can die really quickly. So having a packet like this is very, very nice to have. Um, just more general stuff, I have more antibiotic ointment, just it gets used all the time. Chapstick, you know, nice to have. Um, eye drops, I was out on a fire once where we were working in 40 mile an hour winds the entire day, and by the end of the day, everyone had so much sand and stuff in their eyes that people could barely see, and they ended up calling a medic out to just give everyone eye drops. Going down into this <laughs> zipper compartment, just some more generalized things to help. Um, insect sting relief, you know, great for bee stings and all. I've used this stuff a bunch. Um, some extra drugs, but they're all up here anyway. This is just more if it runs out. Um, I have some ammonia inhalant. This can wake someone up pretty easily. Um, I have two cold packs. These are very, very, very useful, but they're kind of hard to keep on buying, like they cost a lot. So I'm only gonna use these if it's like a true emergency. Um, they're also great for hyperthermia. Um, I have an emergency blanket, which is great for hypothermia. The only thing I don't have is a hot pack, which I kind of want to get, which is also very useful during a hypothermia emergency. Um, just some more antiseptic towels and a thing of acetaminophen. It's just nice to have if you have a headache or something. And that's pretty much just all the miscellaneous things I have down in this compartment. All right, now it's time to see what's inside the largest compartment of this bag, which is the very middle of it. And as you can see, I have a lot right off the bat. So in this flap, this is kind of the only trauma thing I have that's just kind of out of place, and that's just because this is the best place of the, in the bag for it to sit. And that is a cervical collar. So this is very, very helpful in any emergency where there's damage to the spinal cord. We really don't want your head moving around too much. So especially car accidents, this is used all the time. Um, but yeah, you can easily just pop this on. This kind of just goes over like that. And then you can kind of put this around someone's neck to help stabilize. Because if your neck moves and you have spinal damage, then you could be paralyzed for life, which is not something we want. Over here I have a BVM. It's basically a manual pulmonary resuscitator and it's like a big bag that I can squeeze air into someone's mouth when, if they were not breathing. Very useful, it gets used all the time in EMS. Right here I have a bunch of airways. These are oral airways, and I have a bunch of them because they're all different sizes depending on how big or small someone's mouth is, as you can see. So it's just useful to have all those. Um, right here I have a CPR face shield mask. In all reality, if I needed to use this, I will already be using the BVM, so this probably won't get used too much, but you never know what situation you come across, so might as well have it. Looking more over here, as you can see, I do have an oxygen cylinder in this bag, so obviously this bag is kept very safe because of this, because oxygen is highly flammable. Um, obviously, it's not stored in an environment where it's too hot or too cold, but it's also easily accessible. 
And with that, I can have a nasal cannula, which can help deliver oxygen in small amounts through the nose. Um, where you need a lot of oxygen, I have a couple non-rebreather masks. Um, this is, once again, life-saving in a lot of different emergencies. Coming and looking back at this compartment, I just have the regulator for the oxygen cylinder. And then right here, I just have another CPR face shield. Once again, I'd be using the BVM, so I probably won't ever use this, but it's just nice to have. And that's everything in my airway compartment. I also do have a nasal pharyngeal airway. It's just not here right now, it's somewhere else. But I do have one of those too. And uh, yeah, that's the airway compartment. And that pretty much finishes up the medical bag I have. And that is my EMT bag. Obviously, I'm still adding things to it. This is just kind of the baseline bag I've created. But uh, I thought you might find this interesting. Thank you for watching this video. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos, and have a great day, everyone.